morning everyone and welcome to this morning's worship coming from St Hilda's Rectory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And, and also, also with you. I hope you have all had a good week. My family and I have enjoyed a lovely week um, on holiday in the Lake District climbing the hills and walking by the side of the lakes, being surrounded by such beautiful countryside is definitely good for the mind, the body and the soul and it can be a healing experience. But even in that kind of earthly paradise, fear and danger are never far away. The sight of tourists wearing masks and sanitising their hands every time they enter a shop is a sharp reminder that even, even having a holiday can be a risky business. And then the horrifying news this week of hundreds of deaths and casualties caused by the explosion in Beirut shocks us into remembering that tragic events can come straight out of the blue and there is little we can do to avoid them. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus' disciples find themselves in a terrifying situation. They can't help themselves, they can't save themselves. And it's only when they cry out to Jesus for help and he takes control of the situation that things calm down and they are safe again. As we worship together today, let's hold on to the knowledge that Jesus is very much present in every situation where there is confusion, fear, pain or turmoil. And that if we can reach out to him, he can bring us courage and calm to our souls. As our first hymn puts it, Jesus can and will reclothe us in our rightful minds. So let's sing together our first hymn this morning, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
take from our souls the strain and the stress and let our adult lives go on as the whole beauty all of thy peace the beauty of thy peace to light our candle for this morning's worship. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Our the light no, no darkness, darkness can, can quench. Let's say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty, Almighty God, God to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Son of Righteousness has dawned with healing in his wings. Let us come to the light of Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Jesus Christ, friend of sinners, you bring hope in our despair. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Jesus Christ, healer of the sick, you give strength in our weakness. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Jesus Christ, destroyer of evil, you bring life in our dying. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for today. Gracious Father, revive your church in our day, and make her holy, strong and faithful, for your glory's sake, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Matthew 14, verses 22 through to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, 
walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Ready, God. Thanks be to God. Every week in our service, we listen to at least one reading taken from the Bible. A series of writings spanning thousands of years in history, put together as a single canon of scripture by the 4th century. By any stretch, it is old. And so even with our modern translations, we are often called to place its meaning into our contemporary world and our own lives and personal situations. Take today's account from Matthew's Gospel, where we see Jesus walking on water. A familiar passage to most of you, I would think. By now, if we've read the Gospel up to that point, like the disciples, we'd already seen the power of Jesus. So the fact that he can walk on water might not surprise us as much as we'd think. The bigger story here is what's happening to the disciples, and by translation, what we see in the world around us. The disciples are struggling to deal with the storm. They were fishermen, and this was their business, but still they flounder. They'd seen the power of Jesus, absorbed his teaching, prayed with him, learnt so much, but at any second they might succumb to the waves. When it really mattered, despite what they knew, they had no power to stop it. Look at the world for a moment. We can put people into space, but there are queues at food banks. We can send drones hundreds of miles to kill people by remote control, but thousands die in developing countries for lack of affordable medicine. Despite all our collective wisdom and technology, we can feel individually powerless when it comes down to doing the things that really matter. So powerless that it feels like there is a storm raging, a darkness in our souls. And in the midst of this storm, this darkness comes a figure. Terrifying at first, a spectre come to haunt us further perhaps, but no. It is Jesus come to us in our life of semi-faith. Who of us can say we have more than that? Half the time we believe, but then there is always doubt. In one second we want his help, and in the next we wish he would go away. It's just too difficult to have him around, because we don't know what to expect. I can't do anything to fight this storm. It is a mammoth task to bring God's love and peace to a disbelieving world. There is just too much to be done, and I can't even begin to make a dent in it. We fear we will be like Peter. If we try to give it a go, we'll only end up sinking. We're probably better just staying in the boat and seeing what happens. But Jesus speaks to us. He gives us words of encouragement and a little rebuke. You of little faith, why did you doubt? It is perhaps in the very second that we make the decision to give up to let our doubt triumph, that the help we need is only a step away. There are many things we are asked to do that we think are impossible. I was on the church roof with the architect earlier this week, checking what needs to be done to repair it, and came away feeling, at least with the building, there was just too much to be done, with little time to manage, and no guarantee of getting the money we need to do it. But when I reread today's gospel, I heard the words of Jesus being spoken directly to me, as if I was Peter taking a step out of the relative safety of my little boat. You need more faith, Jesus said to me. Keep your eyes fixed on me, listen to my words, and do not doubt. So this week in your prayers, please hold before God all those, especially Verity and the Church Council, who are faced with what seem to be overwhelming tasks. If you are struggling with something at the minute, I will pray for you. And above all, let's keep our eyes fixed firmly on Jesus 
and have faith that with him beside us, nothing is impossible. Amen. The responses for today are, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, you revealed to your disciples that you were the long-awaited one, who had come to die for the sins of the world, and to be raised again in glory. Lord, you won the victory over sin and death, and grant that victory to all who believe in you. Help us, Lord, to remember that promise in all we do, and strengthen our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All loving Christ, we pray for those who are struggling with their faith, and all who are questioning and searching. Make us sensitive in listening to them, and keep us from being judgmental or inward-looking. We also pray for those who have recently found new faith. Help us to accompany them with warmth and wisdom, so that together we may grow into a deeper knowledge of you, for your love's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we give thanks for this wonderful world, which we share with the whole community of life. We pray that there may be an awareness that we cannot sustain our planet with the aspirations we have for it, and that this wonderful resource is finite. As we reduce Earth's capacity to hold us while interfering with the climate and maintaining global inequality, help us to make a difference today. For life tomorrow, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and our sorrows and give peace to your church. Peace among nations, peace in our homes and peace in our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our healer, we place into your gentle hands all those who are sick at this time in mind, body or spirit. Ease their pain and heal the damage done to them, we pray. Be with everyone who supports them at this time, whether that is family, friends, doctors, carers or nurses, and fill them all with the warmth of your love now and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for ourselves and each other that we may know and understand your will for us. We pray that we can help, support and guide each other through these troubled times and beyond. We ask that you would hold us up in our faith and let us see how it can be in a world filled with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all, we pray for all those that we love but no longer see. Grant them your peace. Let light shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Lord Jesus, you wept at the death of Lazarus, whom you loved. We pray for our friends in their loss. Give courage and companionship as they adjust in their new situation. And be with them as they grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son, our Saviour, performed many miracles and showed us what faith can be. Lord, in our weakness, our faith is not always what it should be, but we know in our hearts that you love us and will hold us up when we falter. Help us, Lord, to be strong in our faith and keep us safe from destruction. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Some notices uh, for this week.
just a reminder that the church will be open this afternoon between two and three o'clock for those who want to come for private prayer. Next week on Sunday the 16th of August we will be holding our first service in church since March. It will be a shortened service but it will be at the normal time of 10.30. If you would like to come please let me know so that I can allocate you a seat and we can keep an eye on numbers. And if you do come, please remember to wear a mask to church. We'll also be continuing with our online service. So don't worry if you can't get to the service in church. Next week, um, we will not be opening for private prayer on Sunday because at six o'clock in the evening there will be another service, this time to mark the retirement of Jill Alexander from her job as Chief Executive of Hartlepool, Hartlepool Borough Council. After the service Jill will spend that evening and the following week walking the way of Hills, the pilgrimage route from Hartlepool to Whitby Please remember Jill in your prayers this week as she lays down the huge responsibility she has carried, especially during the last few months as she has led the council and the town through the pandemic crisis. So two services next Sunday in church, a service at 10.30 for those who would like to come, if you want to come let me know, and a service at six o'clock for Jill Alexander's retirement. Birthdays this week. I happen to know that it is Mark Craig's birthday tomorrow and that it will be Betty Wolfe's birthday on Wednesday. A happy birthday to you both. Thank you to all those who've helped put this service together, to Ian, to Paul, to Stuart, Carsten, Sally and Andrew for all of their help. I hope you all have a good week and that you stay safe and well. Let's ask for God's blessing on the week ahead. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those who you love and pray for now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn for this morning is Eternal Father, Strong to Save. 